Okay, so today I'm going to tell you about this paper on the weight zero compactly supported cohomology of HGN uh, by Madeline Brandt, Melody Chan, and myself, Siddharth Kanan. So this paper is about this moduli space HGN. So what is HGN? It's a moduli space of hyperelliptic curves. So to be precise, it's the moduli space of n-pointed hyperelliptic curves of genus G. So here, when I say a hyperelliptic curve, I mean a smooth complex projective curve that admits a two to one map uh, to P1. So it admits a branched cover of, of degree two uh, to the Riemann sphere. Uh, so everything is over C today. Um, so what so so what kind of space is this? This is is so it has an algebraic structure. It's a smooth Deleen Mumford stack. Uh, of dimension, complex dimension uh, equal to 2G plus N minus one. Um, I should also say, so here we have two parameters, G and N. G is the, the genus of the curve. So this, this has to do with the topology of the surface underlying the curve as a, uh, as, as a topological surface. You know, it has it's a donut with G holes. And then n is the is the number of marked points. So our hyperelliptic curves uh, have n, say, ordered marked points uh, on them. So the the order of the marked points matters, and so this space naturally has an action of the symmetric group S n by reordering the marked points. So uh, let me not uh, get too far ahead of myself. So uh, we're interested in in studying these rational uh, cohomology groups, rational compactly supported cohomology groups. So I'll write um, H I sub C of H G N to mean rationally uh, compactly supported cohomology with rational coefficients. Well, whatever this this vector space is, it's 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 going to carry a filtration, a weight filtration. So it goes up to twice the complex dimension in general. Um, so this filtration, it's so it has to do with the fact that this space, this moduli space, has a algebraic structure. So it has the structure of a smooth Deleen Mumford stack. So uh, it means that each rational compactly supported cohomology group after Deleen carries a mixed hot structure. And so, so part of the data of a mixed Hodge structure is this filtration on 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 the vector on the cohomology groups, and the point is uh, each sort of quotient carries a pure Hodge structure. So this is how, uh, you know, the the Hodge theory of uh, compact complex Kähler manifolds sort of uh, generalizes to al to arbitrary algebraic varieties over C. Um, but uh, so, so what we're interested in in this paper is the weight zero piece of this filtration. So, not only is this uh, a filtration on, on, on this vector space, but 
it's a filtration which is sort of compatible uh, with the SN action. So this weight zero uh, piece of the, the compactly supported cohomology uh, carries the structure of an SN representation. So we're interested in this weight zero piece as an SN representation. So uh, let me now maybe state the uh, main result, but uh, this is the thing to keep in mind. You know, we're interested in the, in the you know, we'd be interested in how this, this vector space decomposes into irreducible SN representations. So uh, here's the main result. So uh, first we have to define some stuff. So I'm going to let, uh, chi sub zero upper SN of HGN denote the SN equivariant Euler characteristic of the weight zero piece. So, so what does this mean? So I'm gonna sum from I equals zero to uh, 4G plus two N minus two. Uh, I'm gonna have a sign tracking this um, degree and then I'm going to sum up uh, some symmetric functions. Okay, so like, what are we, what are we looking at here? So uh, first of all, this, the data type of this object, chi sub n, uh, is, this is a symmetric function. And you know this is you know this lives in some ring of symmetric functions, but the point is that this uh, this tells us the irreducible decomposition of this vector space, this SN representation, uh, into irreducible components. This is exactly the data that this symmetric function encodes. So this is this is somehow this is an upgrade of an Euler characteristic because instead of taking the alternating sums of the dimensions of these vector spaces, we're taking the alternating sum uh, of these vector spaces as SN representation. So in particular, this will recover the weight zero, the numerical weight zero compactly supported Euler characteristic. So I would I would refer to this whole quantity as the SN equivariant uh, weight zero compactly supported Euler characteristic of HGN. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, define a generating function H sub G, which is defined to be just the sum of all of these SN equivariant Euler characteristics as we vary N and keep G fixed. And this is going to be an element of some degree completion of the ring of symmetric functions. But the thing to keep in mind here is that if you know this generating function, you know each of these individual Euler characteristics because this has some degree grading. And if I look at the nth, uh, the nth degree piece of this, of this generating function, that will be exactly the SN equivariant weight zero compactly supported Euler characteristic of HGN. So this, this just packages all of these equivariant Euler characteristics into one object. And so theorem A from our paper so tells us uh, some formula for these for this generating function. So let me just set P sub K. Uh, in lambda for the kth power sum symmetric function. So then uh, we have a formula for HG and I will explain uh, the individual components. 
So I have a first sum. This is going to be a sum of, over some trees, some decorated trees. And then I'm going to have some, uh, basically some, some combinatorial factors. Okay, so uh, let me explain the different components of this formula. So here, this, this thing we're summing over, it's, it's a finite set of decorated trees. Tree in the graph theoretic sense. Now, if I have one of these trees, C, I have a way of associating some sort of uh, graph theoretic double cover of the tree. So P sub C is a canonical, canonical meaning it sort of only depends on the decorated tree. You can reconstruct P sub C uh, and it's, it's a graph theoretic double cover of C. So I mean, most importantly, it's a graph. It's a canonical graph sort of associated to, to my tree C. Uh, this is just a, a sign. Uh, it's, it's minus one to the number of edges of the tree. Uh, then I sum over every automorphism of this graph P sub C. This automorphism naturally acts on the edges of the, of the tree itself C. So I, I have some sign you know, the sign of the permutation on the set of edges induced by this automorphism. And then I have some, some product of these power sums, right? Uh, but the, the last thing to explain here is what is this power, uh, this exponent f of tau comma k, and it has a concrete in interpretation in terms of the sort of the combinatorics of this automorphism. So if I look at k times f of tau comma k, uh, this is the Euler characteristic uh, of the set of points uh, in the graph P sub C, which have orbit of length uh, K under the action of tau. Okay, so uh, you know maybe a first uh, takeaway from this, this theorem is that this is a finite sum, right? This is a finite sum over decorated trees. Uh, we have some finite graph covering each tree, and then we have some finite set of automorphisms of that graph. And uh, then we have some factor that's sort of encoding some statistics about how uh, the automorphisms are acting uh, on the graph. That's that's really what this is. So this is something you can sort of implement on a computer and, and you can calculate uh, these generating functions uh, pretty explicitly. So in the paper, we include calculations up to, I believe, g equals seven. Uh, I, I wanna highlight maybe a more geometric, geometric version of this theorem. So like what like what is this theorem like maybe saying geometrically? Uh, we could have just as well have written this. So it's a sum negative the sum of some trees, and for each tree, I'm going to sum over all integers n greater than or equal to zero. And I'm going to look at the compactly supported SN equivariant Euler characteristic of a space. Okay, so this is why this is geometric. Uh, the, the space uh, has to do with the configuration space of this sort of canonical double cover. Uh, and then there's some sort of other factors. So I take this configuration space and I multiply uh, by a simplex 
of dimension sort of given by the number of edges of the tree minus one. Uh, I want the interior of this simplex as the standard simplex. I can look at its interior and I quotient this whole thing by the automorphism group of this graph. Okay, if I sum up all of these SN equivariant Euler characteristics of these spaces, these spaces built out of configuration spaces of graphs, uh, then I get exactly the original generating function uh, that I was interested in. So part of the work uh, in our paper is translating, you know, this sum, this the, this sum, uh, this configuration space sum, uh, into you know exactly the negative of of this this sort of combinatorial combinatorial sum. Okay, so let me maybe finish by just saying a, a few things about the proof strategy uh, uh, for these theorems. So basically, uh, if I have any normal crossings compactification of HGN, So this means I want a proper DM stack containing HGN uh, such that the, the complement of HGN and XGN is a divisor with normal crossings. Uh, so this, this is some combinatorial property of the compactification. Uh, then, uh, you know, as an upshot of Deline's sort of original work on, on weight filtrations, uh, the weight zero compactly supported cohomology of HGN is identified with the reduced cohomology you know, up to a degree shift of something which is called the dual complex of this, of this normal crossings divisor. So I look at the complement of HGN inside of my compactification, that's some divisor uh, with sort of good combinatorial properties. Uh, I can build some, you know, some sort of generalized cell complex which encodes the combinatorics of the sort of strata at infinity. Strata at infinity meaning like uh, the, the sort of the boundary stuff we add to XGN, uh, we add to HGN to get this compactification in XGN. Uh, so, you know, so we want to exploit this, this theorem. So, so this, this generalized cell complex, you know, hopefully is going to be some, you know, combinatorial gadget that we can get our hands on. And we basically, we prove that if I take XGN equal to some particular space of admissible covers, so I'll just write out uh, in notation what this is. So it's a space of uh, admissible Z mod 2Z covers in genus zero uh, with some specified monodromy data that uh, is as such. Uh, that, that, so whatever this space is, I'm not gonna say too much about it uh, 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 right now, but the point is uh, this space furnishes a normal crossings compactification. So, uh, you know, so this, let me just briefly say, like, what is this space? It's a moduli stack of pointed admissible Z mod 2Z covers uh, of in genus zero. So these were constructed by Jarvis, Kimura, and uh, Kaufman, maybe after uh, earlier work on, on, on admissible G covers uh, by 
uh, Abramovich, Vistali, Abramovich, Corti, Vistali. which we'll say is after maybe Harris Mumford's uh, original theory of unmissable covers. So, I mean, maybe let me try to explain the intuition. So the point is what, like, what is HGN? It's a moduli space of double covers of P1, which, which happen to have, you know, genus G and, and, and marked points on them. And the point is we can compactify this moduli space by allowing the source and target to degenerate simultaneously. And that's exactly what this, this moduli space uh, provides. So we can kind of uh, allow both the source and target curve to acquire sort of nodal singularities, but we have to be somewhat sort of careful about the behavior of the cover around these singularities. Uh, and, and, and that's exactly what this, this theory of pointed admissible Z mod 2Z covers provides. You know, the Z mod 2Z comes from the fact that we have, you know, double covers um, and the 2G plus 2 can be understood as, as fixing the genus of the source curve to have genus G because a uh, uh, hyperelliptic curve of genus G uh, has, has uh, 2G plus 2 uh, sort of branch points in, in, its, in, its, in, its, in its map to P1. Uh, and then the N is sort of the additional N marked points that we, that we have floating around. Uh, so anyway, so then we study the associated dual complex theta G N. So that's the dual complex of H G N inside of this admissible cover space. Uh, so as, so in order to prove the main theorems. Okay, and that, so this involves uh, some sort of, um, so we, we prove that the cellular chain complex associated to theta GN uh, is, is a graph complex. And then we use some sort of arguments coming from sort of combinatorial topology uh, to show that there are sort of various sub complexes that sort of don't contribute any homology. And we're sort of able to use this um, to prove the, the, the main theorems. Uh, so let, maybe let me just conclude by like giving an example of what this this dual complex looks like. So let me uh, write out the cells of theta to zero. So the genus two hyperelliptic curves uh, with no marked points uh, and the combinatorics, or let's say, and the sort of degenerations that they They represent. The point is each cell of, of theta two zero uh, has to do with like some sort of combinatorial type of a degeneration of a hyperelliptic curve together with its map to P1. So sort of the interior, interior cell, we have a map from a smooth genus two curve uh, to a P1 and, and there's gonna be sort of six branch points of this uh, double cover. So this is supposed to represent a smooth curve uh, mapping down to P1. So P1 I'm drawing is a sphere. So the point is these six little uh, legs are the, supposed to represent the six branch points of this, of this map. Uh, so let me, let me draw out the rest of these. So then I have some degenerations. So here I have uh, an elliptic curve and then a P1 sort of glued on with uh, two nodes. And I have sort of a chain of two P1s that this is covering. So this is what I mean when I say sort of the source and target are simultaneously uh, degenerating. So here's another cell of theta two zero. And this here, I have two elliptic curves uh, sort of sharing a node. 
Uh, again, mapping down to a chain of two P1s. Here's a, another cell. So this, this represents now a co-dimension two boundary stratum. Okay, so uh, at this point, let me highlight what I mean by cells. So the cells actually correspond to the maps of graphs. And the sort of drawings of surfaces are just supposed to give you an idea of, of the what the combinatorics of these graphs is sort of representing. Uh, okay, let's finish this up. So uh, I, have an, I have another uh, co-dimension two cell. So what does the uh, surface, the map of, of curves look like in this case? Uh, oops. And uh, two more, these are gonna be the co-dimension three cells. So the co-dimension of a cell has to do with how many nodes uh, the target has. So here I have two nodes, this is co-dimension two. These are both co-dimension one. This is co-dimension zero. This is sort of the interior of the moduli space. So the final two cells. So this one's a little bit hard to draw, so. Okay, so that is the picture of what uh, these graphs look like.